you want to screw them so that they're inside the black rings and there's one there one there there's one there one there and there's three on the bottom ring so you want to make sure that they're all inside so you don't catch the points on the cylinder so then you take this and you put it over the cylinder like that and you position it so that it's the cylinders right in the middle or you know as close as you can get and you just you just do it by looking at it now then what you have to do is just holding that you want to screw these in so what I do is screw it in until it just touches do the bottom one first because that will hold it a little bit better screw it in just touches and then we'll do the one on the side and I'm going to turn it slightly because there's a big hole there going to turn it around a little bit. Okay, so I've got the, the bottom three just slightly touching, and then I can tighten up the other two. Tighten up the top one. Tighten up this one. So until they're just touching. And then I'm, I just double check to make sure that the cylinder's in the middle and make sure this thing is sitting reasonably vertically. It's not exactly. What did you do with this Lewis when you had it? Oh, just turn it. Yeah. Okay. Make sure it's, it's not sitting at an angle. Are you just interested in the Young's modulus, or do you want the Poisson's ratio too? Uh, I need both of them. You need both of them? Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do then is we need to tighten up the middle ring as well. So we'll just turn the two screws in the middle ring. Okay, once I've got all seven of them, there's the, these two, these two, and the three in the bottom. Once they're all touching the sample then I just go around and I tighten them all up a little bit so that the points actually dig into the concrete. And don't over tighten them, just yep. you know just sort of snug them up just like that. Oops there we are. Okay then that holds this to the sample. Now once you've done that you have to take these aluminum bars off because what they do is they hold this thing together so you can put it on. Mm -hmm. But they've got to be off or else it's not going to work. So you can, once you've got it tightened up to the sample, you can take these off. And you'll see these are marked because they they supposed to go in one particular position. Okay, so there's those two vertical ones, which pre which would prevent these guys moving. And then there's also also one in the middle ring, so you've got to take that one off as well. So now that we've taken those all off, that means these two rings can move like that. And the middle ring, which is actually split, can move like that. Because what's going to happen is we're going to put it in the machine and we're going to load it up the way we did a compression. Are you sure the displacement in yeah. vertical? Yeah, so what's going to happen is these two rings <coughs> are going to move together mm -hmm. and we'll get that displacement on this dial gauge. And the middle ring is actually going to go out the way and we'll get the displacement on this dial gauge. So it's a matter of measuring load versus these two displacements. Okay. And then getting that information, you can convert that into stress and strain. And I'll, I'll tell you how to do that. It's on that sheet there.
Okay, so once you've got this on, then just take it and we'll put it in the machine. Um, First of all, let's get rid of this stuff. So we need to turn that bag up again because it's obviously... That's good. Okay, so then we take this. Now, you lift it by the cylinder. You don't lift it by this. Just put it in the same as you do for the compression sample. Just put it right in the middle. So, we, uh, we should read these numbers by, by eye yeah, and write them by it eye. as you read them by eye there is no Data no, there's no data acquisition. Okay, so what we can do is turn the dial gauges on, so this is just off and on. And what you want to do is you want to zero both dial gauges. So you just push the origin button and you just hold it for a moment or two. And it resets it to zero. So both of these now read zero. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to, so what we can also do now is, is bring this top head down. So we'll probably change the down gauge readings. But. All right, this was changed slightly, so reset it. Okay, now, if you look at the ASTM spec that covers this, it's the same loading rate as a compression sample, but what I do is, on the compression sample, I use, for my pacer setting, I use 35, which is the middle of this range. And we use 33. Yeah, but that's the, that's the pacer setting, that's not, this is the loading rate. Okay. I use 35 pounds per square inch per second. I use that number to calculate the pacer setting. Oh, okay. The pacer setting comes out to be 33. Now, when I'm doing the modulus, it's the same range, but mm. I use the very bottom of the range because it's going much slower and it makes it easier to, to read the numbers. Okay. So I use the number 20, 20 PSI per second. So that gives a pacer setting of 19. Mm -hmm. So I run the pacer at 19. So we just have to change this to 19. If I was doing a straight compression sample, it would be 33. But because I want to run this as slow as I can, I use 19. It's the okay. bottom of the range. <clears throat> the next thing we have to decide is the ASTM spec says you load your sample to 40% of the ultimate. So we know that your ultimate was 51,000. Sorry. It was 51,200. So can you figure out 40% of that? It's about 20,000. 20,480. Alright, let's call it let's call it twenty-one thousand. So we want to load the sample up to that number. And what we want to do is load it up to that number and we want to take readings of load versus the two dial gauge readings. Yeah. So what I normally do is I just take you can take readings um, just decide on what your integral is going to be. So let's say if we go 4,000, that will give us five numbers. Five numbers. So if we go, if we go 3,000. We could try every 3,000. Yeah, it's seven numbers. Yeah, let's try every. So every 3,000. So what we need to do is to go zero. 3,000. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. So this is 20. This is thousand. 
So that's going to be our load increments. Mm -hmm. And then what we want to do is we we'll read the two dial gauges. So over here, let's put Vertical. the vertical and the horizontal. And they're going to be zero when we start. Okay. So what we want to do is, you need, and you need two people for this. Somebody's going to have to operate the machine. Yep. And the person that's operating the machine is going to call out when, he, when we get to the load values. Okay. And then the person has to read the numbers and write them down. Okay. 